Welcome back, everyone. Another night of protests tonight in Ferguson, Missouri, after the death of 18-year-old Michael Brown on Saturday. He was shot to death by a police officer while he was unarmed. We're going to go straight to our national correspondent, Jason Carroll, who is in Ferguson, Missouri, tonight. Uh, Jason, police were on standby. It has calmed down a, a bit now, but what's going on? Well, you know, a little while ago, Don, things were really tense, not far from here. Uh, we went out to the scene where we saw a number of police officers trying to disperse uh, a crowd that had gathered there at McDonald's. Uh, they fired tear gas. Uh, as we were standing there, they repeatedly got on the loudspeaker. Officers in riot gear telling people to disperse, to go back inside their homes. And Don, most of the people that we saw there actually uh, were standing on their front lawns, uh, standing on the sidewalks, obeying the law, doing what they needed to do. But there were a number of agitators there, and police were able to uh, defuse the situation to get the people to move back. They didn't want another repeat of what they saw out here last night, uh, a violent number of people looting and doing things in that manner. What we're seeing outside here in front of the police station right now is a small group of people who have gathered on one side of the street peacefully. On the other side of the street, you have a number of officers who are simply standing by and watching and waiting. And that's what we've really been seeing all night long. Uh, peaceful sort of uh, demonstrators like this and then small pockets of violence. Uh, other than that, uh, the officers who've been out here and talking to us basically saying they're going to keep monitoring the situation, trying to get a handle on things, and trying to get people to disperse before things turn ugly like they did last night. John? Yeah. Um, take us uh, inside, if you will, to the crime scene. I understand that you went there to Jay today, Jason. What did you learn? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, when you go out there, Don, and I know you've been in a lot of urban communities before, and you've heard this, this sentiment over and over again, and I was speaking to one young man who said, I go to school, uh, I obey the law, and yet when I come in and out of, of my community, I'm constantly stopped by the police. And this is a theme that I heard over and over again, and basically what everyone was telling me is that what happened to Michael Brown was really the tipping point for many members of this community. When this happened to him, that is why you saw so much anger, uh, which had been bubbling for quite some period of time, come to the surface. There's clearly a, a breakdown of a relationship between the police department and members of the African American community here. And, and that's why you saw what happened here. And when I went out to the scene, when you you know you see people leaving cards and you know, you've seen these sort of makeshift memorials pop up over and over again. But what I really got a sense of is this feeling of distrust with the between the police department and the community here. Jason Carroll, thank you very much. How are you dealing with this right now? The best that I can. Yeah. Your son, Michael, had just graduated from high school, was set to start college today. Tell us about him and what kind of a young man he was. He was my first born, sweet, loving, dedicated. He worked hard to get through high school, and we so proud of him. And for him to start a new journey going to college, we was even more proud of him. And he was just spending the summer at his grandmother's house. Never did we think we'd be planning a funeral. We was waiting on his first day of school. And uh, they robbed us of that. They took one of my best friends. You were close. That's my son. First child I ever had. It's hard to convey a parent's agony, especially a mother's agony, for losing a child. And I thought you, what you said was so profound about getting him to stay in school, getting him to go to college, graduate high school and go to college, which is, has been a challenge. It's difficult for many African-American boys. Why do you feel the need to say that? Because it was the truth. It was the truth. And I needed them to know that people may do things and it becomes um, repetitive and a certain race, but we didn't, we don't live like that. 
not our family. We feel like we can do anything and go anywhere. We're just not subject to living in the city. And like I said, just because my son is a 6'4 black male walking down a city street does not mean he fit the profile for any anything other than just walking down that street. That's all he was doing. You said that nothing wrong. You said that it was he was your best friend. My mother is my best friend. And what she would say is that you shouldn't go before I should go. Your son should not die before you die. I sadly have to say that. Yeah. You okay, Leslie? I'm going to be okay, you know. I'm going to be okay. But right now, I'm not. I'm not okay. Michael, you heard Leslie say it was her best friend. And and you, how are you dealing with this? It's hard. He was my best friend, too. It's hard. I'm not seeing him. I'm talking to him on the phone. Him cracking jokes. Him just playing around being him, you know? Because I, I understood him, you know? He was just a, a, you know, a, a bond we had, you know? I'm gonna miss all this. But I got memories in my head that will never go away. Good time. Your shirt get through it. Your shirt says no justice. I would as soon as that. Why are you, why are you wearing the shirt? Because my son don't have justice, and we don't have no peace. If he has no justice, we won't get no peace. Yeah. Um, Benjamin Crump. Um, I'm going to let you guys go, but I, I want to talk to you about what should people know about what's going to happen with this particular case. I'm sure you're going to make sure that their story is told and that it's told accurately. And that, as a father said, he doesn't believe now that he has justice, but there, that there might be some justice for Michael Brown. Yes, as Michael said, he will get justice. Him and Leslie have been steadfast that they will not stop until they get justice for their child. And, uh, you know, myself and a lot of the lawyers with the National Bar Association and various other organizations uh, are committed to making sure that people in St. Louis know that they do deserve equal justice, that they do deserve due process, and that this is not right that their son was killed on a Saturday afternoon in broad daylight, walking down the street, doing nothing wrong, just minding his business, and yet he puts his hands up and he's repeatedly shot by a police officer that's supposed to protect him. Mm -hmm. it's, it is not justified in any circumstance. And that's why it's so hard for Leslie and it's so hard for Michael to do these interviews, but they know they have to do it because they have to get justice for their child because in getting justice for their child, it helps change the system to say that no more is this going to happen. Yeah. Well, Michael, to you first and then, I'm, and then to your wife, I'm just going to say this to you. Uh, as a father, be strong. Make sure your family's okay, but don't be afraid to break down and be vulnerable because you can do that as a man. And to you, Mom, I don't even know what to say to you except that every mother in this country, in this world, is rooting for you. And so you stay strong. You have the entire world behind you. And if you ever, either of you, need anything, you know how to get in touch with me personally. Thank you, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Truly sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Don.